Hello everyone, you are welcome to Network Peeps. So in today's class, we're going to discuss about containers. Uh, we're going to see how we can use uh, Docker to manage containers and also build our own images and upload it to Docker Hub. So basically, our learning objectives for this class is going to be understanding what container is and also uh, difference between container and virtual machine and they also containers and images. These are related technologies and the people usually mistake these technologies. So I'm going to break it down. I'm going to break it down for you and you understand the difference between them. Then also we're going to look at uh, Docker and they also look at Docker commands which we can use to manage our containers. And they also build our own our own uh, Docker image, our first Docker image using Dockerfy and also manage uh, multiple containers using uh, Docker Compose. And then at the end of this class, we're going to, at the end of this course, we're going to do a mini project to solidify what we have learned so far. So um, in this, uh, we're going to look at, uh, the first thing we're going to look at is uh, containers. So remember when I used to work with AB, when the developer team, uh, they are develop, when they want to develop an application, uh for the organization it might be a financial application they will meet up with the infrastructure team you know the infrastructure team will comprise of the system administrator you know the uh, the network administrator and the other uh, this it yeah it help desk so basically um what they are requesting for us to provide an environment where they can deploy their deploy their code and test to make sure that everything is working fine so basically what the infrastructure team is going to do is provide this a test server for them and also uh, a, an isolated network where they can run their application. So once these developer guys are done testing the application and the, the UAT is passed, they're going to request for us to provision what they have on test on the production so they can also go live. So we're going to replicate what, they ha what we have on, on the test to production. So one of the issues we, we usually encounter in this kind of scenario or in this kind of process is that once they move their application that worked very fine on test to production, it's not going to work. They will always have some one issue or the other. It might be, uh, com um, uh, let's say, version, con uh, version compatibility or one dependency or the other is missing all this kind of stuff. So there are usually some back and forth and we might end up uh, not meeting the, uh, uh, you know, wasting some production uh, uh, time, you understand, in troubleshooting uh, these two environments to know what is what is on test and what is missing on production environment, you know. So that's where container comes in. Container gives us this consistency in our software deployment. So anything that you, it helps us to package the package all the entire runtime of this application that we want to deploy and all the files and dependencies that this application requires into one image. You understand? And this makes it easy for us to move this container application between different environments. So it's, it's going the same container that we are going to deploy on the test environment, that will be the same uh, uh, container we are going to move and deploy on the production environment. Very portable, no hassles. Now, we have different container uh, technologies. We have, uh, we have uh, Podman, we have Builder, and we have Kubernetes for managing these containers in clusters. We also have Cryo, and the, one of the most popular one is Docker, you know? So in this class, we're going to uh, be looking at uh, Docker for this class, looking into Docker for this class. But before that, let's uh, understand the difference between container and virtual machine. I remember when I used to work with, work, uh, work with virtual machine, that was uh, one of the, what I used to work with there, you know, deploying different application on different guest OS there. That was how we deployed application back then. Now, I get to, uh, when I get to uh, start learning 
what docker e, uh, what container is i started having some uh, questions like what is actually the difference because they actually do the same thing they are they are virtual virtualization technology but they operate on different level of the computing stack and they serve different purposes you understand so basically if you are looking at at our operating system the, our operating system is going to comprise of the os kernel it's going to comprise of the applications you understand now the question is what parts of the operating system does the doc, uh, does the container virtualize and what part does the uh, vm virtual machines virtualize so for docker uh, for containers sorry for containers uh, it virtualizes only the application layer of the operating system why for vms they virtualize both the application and the os kernel of this operating system now this uh, typical example of a virtual machine is uh, is our uh, this EC2 instance usually spin up on AWS. These are typical example of virtual machine because we spin up this we spin up that uh, virtual machine as a guest on AWS host physical machine at their back end. That's what it's that's what we are that's what we usually do. Now let's dive right in deeper and understand the architecture of these two technologies. Now we'll have your virtual machine, your virtual architecture, architectural as follows. We we'll have uh, uh, we we'll have the OS, the host OS. This can be your Windows, this can be your Linux, this can be your Mac OS. Now on top of this OS, now on top of this host OS, we're going to have your hypervisor technology running here. Now this can be your virtual. Oracle Virtual Box, your VMware or VM ESSI. You no. Know? Now, on top of the hypervisor, we can now have different guest OS. Now, the amount of guest OS you're going to have on your hypervisor will be will be determined by your hardware of your operate of your system. So your hardware might means uh, your cpu your memory and your hard drive all those things how it mean how many number of guest os you can run you know so this guest os now has its own operating system it, as you can see this can be windows this can be uh mac OS, this can be linux different flavor of linux you know running on this same uh, hypervisor isolated from each other so on top of this guest OS now, you can have your your binaries and your libraries. And on top of that libraries, you now have your application running. Now, coming to Docker architecture environment, you have your host OS, which is your Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. On top of it, you're going to install a Docker engine. Now, on top of that Docker engine, you're going to have your uh your uh what do you call it you're going to have your binaries and your libraries running on top of this docker engine they will now have your container running on top of it so you can see the docker architecture looks smaller than the virtual machine which means uh one of the major difference uh between docker and the virtual machine is that it's smaller so it's more easier to move than your virtual machine you understand then it's also faster to spin up and to start up than to compare to your your virtual to compare to your virtual machine so these are the the major difference between your docker and your virtual machine and your docker also your docker engine or your container also doesn't have its own uh, doesn't have its own uh, OS. It is going to it relies on the host OS. You understand? Compared to your virtual machine, virtual machine has its own OS. It has its own uh, OS kernel and the application and those kind of stuff. But Docker does not have all those things. It relies on the host OS for those uh, magic to happen. You understand? So, having said that, let me quickly show you an example. Uh, of 
a virtual machine that I have on my system. Now, on my system, I have Oracle VirtualBox uh, installed, a hypervisor Oracle VirtualBox installed. I'm running as my host a Windows machine, a Windows uh, operating system, and the, on top of it, I'm, I have Oracle VirtualBox. It's an open source tool, or it's an open source, so you can easily install it on your own operating system and also have it running. Then on top of it, I have two virtual uh, two guest OS here. I have a Sophos Firewall, and I also have my Ubuntu operating system running. To save us some time, I I went ahead to start this operating system to show you. So if I double click on it, it's going to bring me this my operating system, and I'm going to put my password to log in into this my operating system. So you can see my OS here, eh? just a different uh, environment from what I have on my Windows. I can even open my files, my file explorer to see my different files, my music, my pictures, and my videos. So you can see I even have my also uh, uh, my also hard drive on its own, a virtual hard drive actually. So I'm not going to dive 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 deep deep into this. Uh, into this uh, stuff i just just want to show you how it looks like so having said that um that will bring us to the end of this class and uh, i would like you to like the video and subscribe and if you have any question please drop it on the comment section and i will be free to attend to your questions see you in my next video thank you okay let me end